Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Uh, we head straight to our first major conversation where we look at the indictment of Abba Kiari. And other police officers, a report says, suspended head of intelligence response team and deputy police commissioner Abba Kiari has been arrested by the Nigerian police. According to reports, Kiari was arrested hours after the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency declared him wanted over alleged drug links. The suspended DCP, who is also under investigation by the Federal Bureau of Investigation of the United States of America, indicted him in the case of fraud involving Instagram celebrity popularly known as Hosh Poppy. A senior police officer at the force headquarters told correspondent and reports that Kerry was handcuffed and arrested like any other suspect. Now this morning, we take a look at the legal implication of uh, this as regards uh, all of this and uh, the fact that you have the law of extradition. Now the fact you have the United States uh, wanting him on that particular list, you also have uh, the uh, government here in Niger, the police also arresting him and the involvement in drugs. What does this really mean for him and uh, what do we look out for joining the conversation is a former dss director dennis mercury it's good to have you join us this morning good morning uh, so let, let's uh, share your thoughts uh, on this particular issue first i'd like to get your reaction an overall reaction uh, what do you make of this i mean a lot of people say that they do respect the person of Abba Kiari. He's a super cop. I mean, he's done a lot uh, if you look at his track record. And with this, are you surprised? Are you shocked at this uh, development? Well, um, it's a shock to me because uh, I personally know Abba Kiari. I think I will call him my friend. I've met him in a couple of fora where uh, we, we share the awards together. And um, I was totally very shocked when I heard that, uh, number one, he was uh, into uh, kidnapping with uh, Hush Poppy and all those kind of stuff. Then a uh, bigger shock came in when I heard about this drug thing. So it, it's really sad uh, because uh, I am looking beyond Abakari himself because uh, which kind of situation where we are having criminals who are going to be enforcing our, you know, our laws in Nigeria, which, which that's a major issue right now. And uh, I think everybody should look at that. Hmm. Interesting, uh, Mr. Mr. Dennis Macri. Um, wh what do you make of, of uh, the poli police's response to this? Um, it's now become almost like a back and forth between the two state security um, organizations, the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency and the Nigeria Police Force, because the NDLEA said they had, um, you know, written letters of invitation as it is due process uh, to, um, uh, or as it is the process to Abakari inviting him for questioning, and he had refused to submit himself to them. Uh, now he did, had to address his press conference telling the whole world to the shock of even the journalists in the studio somewhere ahead exclaiming Jesus when they heard uh, <laughs> Abba Kiari's name. So you're not the only one who was shocked. Um, the police now responded by saying, oh, um, we, uh, we know about the situation. We've been monitoring it. In fact, we have a report on Abba Kiari already. Um, but we've also been monitoring the situation around the Akanubiam International Airport, and we know that there are other NDLA officials who are also part of what's going on. So please, um, Buba Marwa, uh, can you investigate them? Uh, what do you make of the police's response to this? I think the police was trying to cover their own bag. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's a protocol in the services whereby you cannot arrest a soldier or a policeman or even a DSS officer, you know, directly and take him to court or interrogate him. You have to apply to the service that he works for and they will release him, okay? And then, of course, they've done this earlier, asking the police to release him concerning this drug issue. But I think the police was trying to sh shuffle their leg until they have to go to the press and blow it out. And now the police does not have any other choice. I, from what I learned, he has been handed over uh, to the NDLA now. 
So uh, they will go through their processes. And then, of course, uh, one missing link is that Abba Kerry has to be dismissed from the police before uh, he, can, he can be taken to court. He has to be dismissed, you know, because he cannot go there as a serving officer. And then if he's dismissed, they take him to court, and if he's indicted and uh, prosecuted, um, I think uh, the FBI in the United States is actually waiting for him right now to make sure that the Nigerian uh, security agencies get their stuff together and then uh, bring him over to complete an investigation that they are carrying out in the United States now. Hmm. So, but, but with all of this now, what does this really say about the Nigerian, uh, you know, police force, especially at a time where he celebrated? And you have also, you know, attested to the fact that uh, you both have been in the forum where there's several awards and all of that. Uh, what is the image for the Nigerian police force right now? Uh, the, the Nigerian police force has had uh, a trust deficit with the uh, Nigerian public. And then, of course, uh, many people don't uh, trust the police. Uh, I know that the new IG has been trying to fight to see that uh, he bring, bring up uh, the image of the police very well. And uh, with all these things happening, I don't think many Nigerians will be really surprised because they say, oh, now police said, okay, yeah, that's how they are. But uh, this particular cop is somebody that has been celebrated. And uh, it is very, very shocking that uh, with all those flying colors, you know, uh, there is rot underneath, you know, and there are many people who will really, really be worried about it. So it calls the question, what are we going to do about our police force? There is need for a very serious restructuring, you know, both in the processes and in the structure itself. Are we going to get state police? Are we going to, you know, uh, retrain people? All those kind of things have to come to play now because with what is going on now, I don't believe that um, uh, the police uh, the police is even deeper in a very bad way. So I think uh, they have to sit back and think about it seriously. Hmm. Uh, just to get a sense of, of, of uh, the state of affairs and the state of things with the Nigeria police force, um, firstly, you know, we're not even talking about the entire system. Um, you've talked about the inspector, the current inspector general of police, trying to reform the police and, you know, to make sure that the police is set right. Um, but but we've, what we've seen here uh, is foot dragging. Uh, you've rightly said, um, um, uh, Mr. Macri, that, uh, you know, the DSS or the NDLE had approached a written as it is the protocol in the security um, apparatus in the country, written and applied to the police for the release of this man. Um, he wasn't released. That amounts to foot dragging. We look at the uh, accusations and the um, sort of incontrovertible evidence out there of communication between uh, the uh, you know arrested fraudler or fra fra fraudster rather hush puppy and this police officer and the court documents and the investigations and reports of the American FBI indicting this man and we still see that he's still in the country and he's still you know, or do under suspension, still a policeman. So, so what is going on? I mean, why do we have such foot dragging? Is there sincerity coming from the top echelon? Let's start with the police, first of all. Is there sincerity really to reform the police and to make sure that the rights are, are wrongs are right, are, are said right? Well, you know, change is a very, very difficult thing uh, to take place in any organization or any country. You know, so um, I know that the police authority would want to see their image improve. But you know, when this guy was arrested, uh, when the Americans indicted him, there is this uh, protocol that need to be followed. Because the FBI asking for Abakari uh, cannot just get him like that. Just like I mentioned to you earlier, as long as he is a serving officer. He has to go through some kind of trial, internal trial. That trial will now decide uh, whether he is guilty or not guilty. If he is guilty, what they will do is to dismiss him. That's the process. After the dismissal, 
Then he will be taken to court. But I know he was just suspended. The case has been dragging because I know fully well that uh, the, the, the police authorities might not want to uh, send him to the United States just like that. Uh, because I know from what we are getting right now, if this guy is put under serious interrogation, he's going to sing. And uh, the singing might involve some people because the kind of confidence that uh, he has in going out to do all these things does not just say that, you know, and the free hand he was using. I don't think that uh, he was just alone in doing this. There might be other people. Remember, when the first indictment started from the FBI, we did know about four other people that were part of it. Now, this second uh, indictment from the FDLA has shown that there are other four, you know, so uh, that's how more people are going to be involved. And we know no more people are going to come out of it. Okay, so it, it, it's sounding like you're saying that the reason uh, for this, because that's a lot of thoughts that's been put out there. A lot of people are believing that uh, the reason for all of this arrest and the indictment is just to prevent him from answering questions of, uh, you know, that he has to answer the FBI, of course, in the United States and the, his linkage or connection with Hush Poppy. But um, that's how, that's what it sounds like right now. So I'm hoping that you answer that. Because if you look at the crime here, uh, drug is an international crime. And so if he's been linked as being uh, a drug lord or, you know, a cartel, leading a cartel, um, talking about connection with Ethiopia and Nigeria, uh, that's an... I mean, I'm sure that you already know what that is. So how can that be? Because if drug is an international crime, why will then um, the Nigerian police force or the government want to put him out there, uh, you know, in that light? Well, one thing I can uh, explain to you here is that uh, no matter how food dragging uh, the Nigerian uh, police will do, uh, now that the, uh, the FBI he has come to the knowledge of the FBI, you know, they will, they will, it could take years, but they will interrogate him, you know, it's part of their processes. They are not just going to forget him or sweep it under the carpet. They will interrogate him, no matter, except he dies, you know. So, um, that is there, because like you said, it's an international crime, and being an international crime, is something that uh, they don't play around with, especially if it involves money laundering, drug trafficking, if it involves American citizens, or it is taking place in on American soil. The FBI will bite and until get this root out of it. So um, I think we can drag all we want, but uh, um, I think it's better for them to go ahead and follow the processes quickly and send them out. That will also help the image of Nigeria, because if we continue holding on to this, there might be sanctions that could follow, and that is something we, we don't want to go through. Hmm. We're glad to say we're joined uh, now uh, by Tunde Kolawale, legal uh, practitioner and uh, Efe Wanago, a security expert. Uh, gentlemen, thanks for joining in on the conversation. Thank you, thank you. It's a day. All right. Okay, so Tunde Kolawale, let's start with you because this is a legal issue now. Uh, what would you say is the legal implication uh, for the indictment of Abba Kiari, especially when we understand the law, I mean, that had existed, the issue of extradition, uh, which was inherited by, you know, uh, the fact that we are part of the British colony, uh, uh, you know, British um, uh, colony, yes. So, um, how how does this really play out, and what does this mean? Well, the matter is a very simple one, but also most unfortunate. So you and I will remember that there is already an application for the establishment of the third party to the United States of America for waiving and abetting and being a participant in the name in the course of uh, wire money fraud that was committed by us. That has not been solved. In the characteristic Nigerian manner, we have been rigmaroling, pushing the case up and down. 
with nobody left to take the responsibility. Now that this is coming, I suspect it might follow the same procedure. If it is going to be set forward, what we require to be done is to take a back the hand to compile an application in court that um, the Brazilian authority require uh, Mr. Bakiari to come and answer some, some charges with regards to drug uh, uh, courier, drug uh, sales and all and all of the issues that are usually related to drugs. And then uh, Mr. Bakiari will also have the opportunity to file his defense in court. If the court is convinced based on whatever evidence is presented to the court, that Mr. Bakiari is probable, then the court will rule that Mr. Bakiari should be established to prevail to answer to the court uh, uh, charges. Mm. And then, of course, the Attorney General and Minister of Internal Affairs will have a role to play in it. But when you look at our history, you will find out that Nigeria has hardly established any of the citizens any of these conditions who are answer to whatever that uh, may have put against them. We've never had this, that history at all. Yes, people get a certificate to our own country, but we have no certificate to some other country. And the only person I remember doing it was the late Attorney of the Secretary, Tibola Egi, who was certificate from drug bureau overseas. Or try away the people who are missing against Africa. In fact, Mr. Bolagi was so blunt that he never even bothered to take those drug suspects to court for any reputation for a traditional proceeding. His uh, position was that uh, if their hands were clean, they should go back to those countries, answer to the charges against them, and then they will come back home um, if. Uh, their hands are clean and they are not excited or convicted. And it's so a service can go to those countries. Ever since then, I don't remember Nigeria establishing of the citizens to some of these countries uh, to go and answer to charges. Do you remember the case of uh, Buriti Kapanu? For more than almost 20 years, Nigeria was unable to establish Buriti Kapanu at all. To go and answer to those charges. They called me, the court were playing you on the case, the NDMA were playing you on the case, the National Assembly also put a wedge in the extradition of the political abroad. And then the Attorney General also never had the board to carry out um, an extradition proceeding in court. So, All this right. is the dilemma. Okay, interesting uh, to the colleague. Uh, yeah, yeah. Th thank you very much. Let, let us start bringing um, uh, Ife Wanogo, uh, security expert. Ife Wanogo, thanks for your time. Kofi Bartels here, uh, and Mercy Egbopo as well. Um, how is it that such uh, a suspended police officer who has been removed at the, as the head of the um, intelligence response team, going by the, uh, the, the words of the spokesman for the NDLEA, is still able to work with the team um, from the intelligence response unit? Or with a, with a, with a, yes. Well, it's, um, it, it, it's a situation that um, is simply inexplicable, in a manner of speaking, because I think this is where this whole controversy and suspicion is stemming from. Was it suspended just to please the public? Was it just a function of feeling the pulse of what the United States of America and then the Nigerian civil society were going to say, was it the case of dousing the outrage as to the allegations against Abakari? Was that why he was suspended? And was it just on the pages of newspapers and then he was still being utilized for official duty? Or was there a break in the chain of command with regards to the IROT and how the carrier their functions? So what this speaks to basically is a gap as far as the police is concerned. Um, they are not very thorough in carrying out um, their day-to-day -day operations and the approach and outlook that they have 
for the entire Nigerian um, population. Such a situation like we have on our hands, that somebody has been suspended and is still seen to be functioning. Shamelessly, it has been admitted, it is there in the public domain. And the other thing you have to ask uh, and just oppose this with is, why does he remain suspended for this long? How long does it take the police service commission to close out the investigation on this person? When you say police across the world are being rated and Nigeria is having very negative ratings, it is such issues you know, that come up and become a bright on the image of the Nigerian law and other environment. So the police authorities must do the best they can so that justice will be seen to be done. In fact, uh, like, like I was discussing with a colleague and a friend, somebody who is in the security services, particularly the police, must be held to much more higher standard than the ordinary Nigerian. So much so that when he decides to carry out his normal day-to-day -day functions, nobody is going to question his motive because they know that such a person has already been held to higher standards. There's a Latin maxim that, that says, it's so custodious, with good custodious, it's so custodious. Who will guard the guards themselves, in a manner of speaking? And that's where we found ourselves now. So the police must be unimpeachable. And sadly, that's not the situation we have. And I think these things do happen because heads do not roll. To put it simply, there is a lack, an acute lack of consequence management in the Nigerian landscape as far as the public sector is concerned. But as far as the security sector is concerned, particularly, there is a lack of consequence management. People are not held responsible. For instance, who does the IRT report to? Where is the gap coming from? Has there been any resignations? Has anybody been called to order? I'm aware that the security agencies are agencies where you give instructions and you take instructions. And everybody has its own poor view and area of responsibility. So if somebody has dropped the ball, what is the IG, the Secretary General of Police, doing? What is the Chairman of the Police Service Commission doing? And then what is the Commander-in-Chief doing? Because it all rubs off negatively on the Nigerian image. Mm. Well, well, talking about, you know, what the police is actually doing, uh, I, I, it's also been put out there that there was actually an in-house uh, police investigation was discreet, and that's how, uh, you know, the police was able to, you know, to arrest, coupled with uh, the issues that the... Uh, the NDLEA had actually raised. Well, however, I'd like to also bring in Dennis Amakari uh, once again back to the conversation. Dennis, I hope we still have you on the line. Yeah, I'm with you. All right. So, so let's look at uh, what this would mean for some of the cases that you know Abba Kerry has handled. For instance, very popular one in our mind is that of Evans. And so, um, with all of this uh, issue, arrest, and then the fact that these agencies are saying that they have facts, they can actually establish it that he has, uh, you know, a connection with international uh, drug trafficking or cabal or cartel, however you want to put it. Uh, what does this mean with some of these cases? And Evans has actually accused them of extortion. Oh, yes. Um, uh, of course. You find out that um, the cases that has even brought him to the limelight, where he was uh, termed the super cop in Nigeria, still remains. It does not mean that uh, Evans did not uh, actually kidnap people. Uh, maybe there might be some problems in processes uh, or the, you know, the way he used it, uh, trying to prosecute uh, his investigation. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, I know that that is not going to be effective. The major case is that Evans is a kidnapper and they will take it from there. But for his own indictment of what he did with drug drug uh, dealers, that's another case altogether. How about the case of extortion that he's been <coughs> accused of by events? Who we say, you know, it's a kidnapper? If uh, he can prove that, or if his lawyers can prove that in court, that uh, during the, the investigation, the, you know, uh, about carrying extorted money from him, then no problem. Uh, the court will decide what they want to do, either restitution uh, to the person, but that is not going to cancel the case. 
All right, uh, uh, Mr. Makri, th th this um, uh, uh, probe in Tobakari, and I'm still going to I'm going to bring us back to the the issue of foot dragging. Um, the in the loop we have a Nigeria Police Force launching an investigation. In the loop we have a Police Service Commission which is meant to receive the report and forward it to uh, the Attorney General and Minister of Justice Aboka Malami SCN, who is also in the loop. And this panel submits its report uh, to the PSC. PSC says the report has been sent to uh, the Attorney General. Then later they get a, a statement out saying that the report is not deep enough and orders that uh, the panel should go and do another investigation and bring another report in two weeks. But we have evidence, reports, uh, investigations conducted by the Federal Bureau of Investigation in the United States of America. We have testimony from a suspect who is undergoing trial. We have evidence put out of communication between this police officer and a suspect undergoing trial for fraud. And we're still around, hovering around this whole issue uh, of what I, you know, when a report is going to be accepted or not. And then this has cropped up as well. And um, I, I still want us to, to, to get to the bottom of who is protecting Abakari and why. And then is it that the police now condones crime and accepts crime and is okay and comfortable with its operatives? being involved in crime, as long as Nigerians don't say anything about it? Well, the thing is that, you know, this investigation with Abakari has been going through the beds. And, um, yes, the other person could say that, yes, he's being covered or somebody's protecting or watching his back uh, and then they are refusing. Because, uh, remember, this guy was a high-flying officer. And being a high-flying officer, of course, there are some very senior officers that maybe, you know, would be very, very familiar body body with him. So uh, I know that it could come to a situation where some people might go and say, oh, let's look at this, you know, he, he has done five good things and then here yeah, we have only two bad things. So why are you trying to kill him? You know, don't throw the baby uh, with the baby water out of the place. But that is not law. Of course, the lawyer there will tell you that what he has done is against the law and he's going to answer for it. Uh, the United States FBI, you know, will carry out their investigations. They are not sharing it with the Nigerian uh, police. They will carry out their investigations. What they've just done is to request for him to be brought to them. And when he comes, they will interrogate him and then take him to court. And when he gets to court, everybody will hear what actually happened you know so um, they are not going to share their report with us uh, what we need to do here is to keep our house together because trying to cover him or trying to food drag and you know pull it for a longer time is not going to help us mm. number I, one it is going to hit our image all right. I, 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 have, I have a quick question for you, and I think I could turn the color to as a lawyer would, would also chip in on this. Um, th there is something called a code of conduct for public officers, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, or public servants in the Nigerian yeah. constitution, apart from the codes that uh, yeah. um, govern the individual agencies, ministries, and departments. Um, uh, Abakari has been seen before now to be frolicking with different sorts of people, having you know, direct communication as a police officer, for instance, as a public servant in Nigeria, there are certain things that you shouldn't do. Um, is this code of conduct for public officers as enshrined in the Nigerian constitution 1999 as amended, is it enforced, I mean, from your time as director of the DSS, what, was it something that uh, your operatives and yourself were aware of and, um, you know, schooled on and, you know, knowledgeable about to be careful not to flout? Let me tell you, um, the other security expert there was saying it to you, that, you know, when it comes, uh, I think FA, that when it comes to code of conduct, the ones for security officers is higher than the one that is out on the public, you know, because there are very critical areas that security officers tread in and you cannot you know compromise yourself you know there are there are there are even situations where you don't accept gifts i remember when i was in the service if you bring me a christmas hamper or you 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 bring me a gift somehow i am going to declare it that gift will be declared to the office and the office will now decide to say, 
okay, you can keep it or we confiscate it. There are many implications for gifts. Number one, it could, you know, make the officer to be compromised. Number two, in our own kind of service in the DSS, you never know. Some of these gifts might have uh, hidden, hidden cameras or hidden uh, voice instruments that could record people. So these are the kinds of things that in the code does not play around with. So for you to be frolicking with people, going to parties with them, taking pictures, he knows. Because even when he went to the IG, IGP's, uh, uh, I think was it his daughter or son's wedding, he took many pictures and put them on Facebook. And then when people started shouting, he started deleting them. But that tells you a lot of things. How can you, an officer that is under suspension, be invited to a party by the IGP? That tells you everything. Mm. Yeah, Tunicolo, so, very quickly, you, you, your thoughts on this, this um, a serial flouting of the code of conduct for public officers by public <coughs> officers in Nigeria? Hello? Yes, uh, Tunicolo, you, you, yes, go on, yes, we can hear. And then we are talking about code of conduct. Yes, for public for officers. public officers. Yes, yes. Look, with uh, due respect to Mr. Makere, <clears throat> those of us who are lawyers, who interact with some of the security agencies, the DSS, the police, the customs, the immigration and war abuse, we will tell you that uh, this code of conduct thing is hardly enforced. Within, within any of our security companies. Simply because the corruption that is taking place in most of the security forces go right from the very bottom to the top. i give you good an example. Uh, Evan is just uh, making noise now that uh, he was cheap, he was wrong, he was, when he was started from there, when uh, Abakiyari was in the I do know the lawyer to, to Evan, a lot of things were taken from members' house. Money, resources, expensive telephones, and so, uh, generators, and what have you. That were cutted away without another from the court of competence in the future. And when the lawyer to heaven applied to court, that the court has not made a decision, or they have not made another for the confiscation of this one's property. You the court compare this to the back area and say, to return all this material. You will not believe it. Mr. Bakiari started threatening the lawyer. He started calling him on phone to threaten him that he would deal with it. And in addition to that, I won't mention where the telephone also came from. The telephone call came from the most highest to one of the highest levels of the Nigerian police force that the lawyers will stop the application for the return of all the children of the for Mr. Evans' uh, uh, house, house here in Lagos and other places. Furthermore, that is, the implication of that is that uh, the officers who were asking the lawyer to talk to, who were not part of the investigation, knew a lot about what was taking on Mr. Evans' house. Furthermore, I have said this repeatedly, in some other countries of the world, the kind of integrity test is usually strong for security men. Just like Mr. Matthew had earlier once said, a policeman could have to go to have to go and do a search. Okay. And the police would have brought some very attractive things like money, like uh, jewelry, and all that. All right. By all the time right. the policeman goes in there and calls back, I didn't declare that the selling of those things. That's why yeah. there to Mr. Mr. Kolo, I'm afraid, I'm afraid we have to leave it at that. Um, a very interesting, interesting history you've given to us. I uh, wish you had more time. Um, but it's clear from what you've said and from what our other guests have said, uh, Dennis and Macri, and uh, um, of course, uh, if you want to go that time, uh, a lot needs to be done to restore the integrity of the security apparatus in this country. It's gone to the gutters as we speak. 
um, if officers are able to do these things and get away with it. How many other carries do we have? Um, the other members of the IRT, how many of them do we have? The police are saying that they already had a report on them. What were they waiting for? If the NDLA had not come out to blow the whistle and to say this is going on, well, we have known it was going on. More questions and answers. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, Dennis Amakri, former director of the Department of State Services. Thank you very much for your time. Tunde Kolawali, legal practitioner. And thank you very much for your time. Uh, if you want to go, security expert. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, Mercy, it's, uh, it's uh, another day, another drama, isn't it? Definitely. But we move straight to uh, taking a break. When we return, we'll be flipping the coin to the other side, looking at the killing of policemen across the entire country. We'll be joined by former Commissioner of Police, Lawrence Alloway. Please stay with us.